Hello. PipKit is a participatory co-design research project undertaken at OpenLab, the interaction designing ubiquitous computing research group at Newcastle University in the United Kingdom. The study is a multi-stage exploratory investigation into how life logging can help address challenges claimants have accessing disability benefits. The motivation behind this work is how technology can help or hinder the uptake of welfare benefits in social security systems. In particular, we want to explore the space where people seek assistance to make claims from advisors, from civil society and other intermediaries. The project designed a highly customizable prototype elicitation diary toolkit, which was trialled by benefit claimants. We have contributed to an ethically informed approach to investigating innovations in claiming disability benefits. The prototype trials were promising, demonstrating how life logging can adapt the government process, as well as making it more humane from claimants' point of view. The task of making, justifying and evidencing welfare benefit claims is already a life logging task in which claimants have to document life events demonstrating how their disabilities and long term health conditions affect them. Yet life logging approaches have not been tested in the context of benefit claims. Our work explores how life logging technologies might support making a claim. Assisted claim form filling is a collaborative process between claimants and advisors, and our study was designed to give an equal weight to the views of both. Firstly, we worked with advisors to identify constraints, clarify ethical issues, and inform the design of PipKit, a prototype life logging tool to help claimants articulate the effects of their conditions. Secondly, we then trialled the prototype with a small number of benefit claimants to gather information on how PipKit helped them from their perspectives whilst making their own claims. Benefits are an integral part of the welfare state and may be shorter term sickness related or as we have focused on in this study related to longer term conditions and disabilities. 40 to 50 million working age people in OECD countries receive longer term support which is 6% of this population. Setting the level of benefit often involves reducing a multitude of conditions and effects into relatively few categories using approaches based on impairment, functional limitation or disability, with assessment typically comprising a combination of medical evidence and assessor discretion. Claimants may have to provide all the information themselves on forms such as these, and in some cases medical staff may also have forms to complete. These processes present significant challenges for claimants. The task is made more difficult for claimants by the need to gather information and present it on these complex forms in a manner that matches the assessment criteria. Applications may be paper-based, but increasingly application processes have been enabled online digitally. We wanted to know how life logging approaches might work in this context, given the emphasis placed in assessments on patterns of impairments and experience over time. Life logging encompasses using digital technology, often passively, to record individuals' daily experiences ranging from the comprehensive to the partial and selective. In respect of documented health conditions and impairments, this has been realised by a variety of approaches, be it quantified self-tracking, used to help people understand their own health conditions, or photo elicitation, visual life logging, which captures images of daily experience. These approaches have all been helpful for people with health conditions, especially for people with memory impairments. Accurate recall of day-to-day -day variation in effects and recollection of periodic events is necessary to make a disability benefit claim. We followed a case study approach which examined the UK process for disability assessments and obtaining a working age adult benefit called Personal Independence Payment, abbreviated to PIP. Currently, there are around 2.5 million recipients of PIP. Briefly, claimants have to register with the responsible government body, in this case the Department for Work and Pensions, abbreviated to DWP in this diagram, who undertake some basic eligibility checks and then post a paper form of over 30 pages plus guidance notes to the claimant who has to complete this and return it by post. Claimants are likely to then have a face-to-face -face assessment, and that might lead to an award and periodic reassessment. Due to the previously mentioned difficulties claimants have, and complexities of the process, many people rely on specialist advice agencies whose staff and supervised volunteers support them in articulating and documenting their experiences on the claim form. 
Their input is primarily at the initial registration stage and to help complete the form. In close collaboration with one of these advice agencies, at which the lead researcher was a trained advisor, we investigated the potential use of life logging to assist people with disabilities, capture and articulate a thorough description of true life events, to support advisor-assisted PIP claims. We focused our attention on the period between initial contact by an advisor with the claimant and the collaborative form for an appointment. As claimants often find the process deeply distressing, we consider it would be inappropriate having them relive the process in a formative co-design exercise. We therefore first worked with advisors in study one to identify the core constraints which claimants are not always aware of, such as legislation and resources, and undertake the design of a prototype with experienced advisors. It involved ideating based on concepts from experienced sampling and using the day reconstruction method. Indeed, the DWP's own PIP guidance notes suggest that creating a diary might be useful to claimants. The study comprised an initial probe, two workshops, four interviews and design requirements analysis for construction of the prototype. Study two then focused on the claimants themselves, using an exploratory prototype to assist with real claims offering a concrete opportunity for claimants to express their views as to future tools. Given the potential risk to claimants being participants, the study was carefully controlled to ensure that participants had capacity to consent, that taking part would not disadvantage them in any way, especially regarding their claim, that sufficient oversight and processes were in place to avoid conflict of interest, and that a stringent approach to data protection was implemented. The most challenging implication of the University Ethics Committee's foundational principle that the process must be material identical to the normal process was that the lead researcher had to assume the role of being the advisor, putting them in a position akin to nurse practitioners in medical research. The prototype PIP kit comprised four primary functions. A set of seven diary modules were created, which could be completed online digitally or using paper cards to cater for individual conditions and their effects. Only between two and four most appropriate modules were revealed and suggested to each claimant. This was to reduce claimants feeling overwhelmed and to make it easier for them to focus on the most important subset of matters that would assist subsequent form completion. The camera and physical components could be given to the participant in either a plain bag or custom-made natural-looking laser-cut plywood box. Together, these provided a customizable hybrid physical digital prototype for deployment. This mock-up shows the type of diary materials which the participants brought back with them to the form-filling appointment, together with other supporting evidence documents, which are not shown here. The materials were laid out, images copied from the cameras, and used to aid discussion of the questions and to contribute to the answers written on the claim form by the advisor. The data for study two related to recorded interviews with claimants undertaken immediately after each form filling appointment. The impact of PIPKIT was described through claimants' own words. We find that PIPKIT was effective in smoothing the process, making the experience of the claimant less distressing, and identifying potential arguments that would have not otherwise emerged. Our work has also identified a number of principles, including process simplification, visual cues and photography, flexibility and control, and an emphasis upon aesthetics for successfully designing supportive technologies for disability benefit claimants. Returning to look at the details of the two studies discussed, we had 13 advisor participants across two workshops and additional interviews. In the diagram, each outer segment represents one individual. Recruitment of claimant participants for study two was entirely dependent on self-referral by people to the advice agency to request help with their PIP claim over the period of the study. From 11 candidate claimants, our data from this study relates to four participants who agreed to take part and three who completed the diary. A further breakdown of candidate participants illustrates how circumstances and conditions limited the opportunity to invite people to take part in the study. And of the five invited, one declined and one never returned due to other life events which subsequently took place. When study two was undertaken last autumn, note that one person was unable to travel to appointments. In the current circumstances, face-to-face -face appointments are not possible at all, 
and advice agency staff are having to adjust to interacting remotely with citizens who need help. Given this situation, we are looking to enable the digital PIPkit diary component for advisors in other agencies to use with their own service users, with a view to a third study based on remote interviews of PIPkit users. This is work in progress. We welcome engagement with our work and are encouraging people to consider sharing their experiences, ideas, suggestions and questions using Twitter rather than email, so that others who may be interested can benefit from the discussion. Of course, we have email too. A dedicated website provides an overview of the study, all source materials and guidance for other advisors on how to make use of PIPkit in their own practice. Thank you for your interest in our work.